Rock singer Sebastian Bach rose to fame as the frontman of the American hair metal band Skid Row. But these days, Bach is on bad terms with his ex-bandmates, along with many more of his rock and roll colleagues. From Chris Jericho, to Dee Snyder to even the late Meatloaf, here's a look at some of the many rockers who can't stand Sebastian Bach. In 2020, Twisted Sister frontman Dee Snyder engaged in a heated debate with his Twitter followers over the term hair metal as well as which bands qualified as hair bands and which bands did not. Sebastian Bach inserted himself into the Twitter exchange, at first seemingly agreeing with Snyder. The interaction, however, quickly went south as the two began to disagree over some of the finer points of their opinions. Snyder stated that he considers hair metal a derogatory term, while Bach strongly disagreed and blamed Snyder's mentality as the reason for metal bands playing at smaller state fairs instead of massive festivals. Bach would eventually beg Snyder to cease the non-stop tweets about the term hair metal, to which Snyder would fire back, quote, You are wrong, Sebastian, but it is understandable. You are much younger than me and don't know. People need to be edified. Sebastian Bach's career began in 1987 when he was discovered singing at rock photographer Mark Weiss's wedding by Bon Jovi's parents, who subsequently approached him and suggested he get in touch with their son's friend, Dave Sabo, as he was looking for a lead vocalist for his band, Skid Row. Thanks to this chance encounter, Bach ended up joining Skid Row and, a mere two years later, opened for Bon Jovi's 1989 tour. The relationship between the two bands soured after Skid Row's t-shirts began outselling Bon Jovi's. At the tour stop in Kentucky, Bon Jovi's crew would ambush Sebastian Bach and pour a vat of ice-cold milk over his head just as Skid Row's intro music began to play. When a soaking wet Bach eventually took the stage, he took to the microphone to publicly insult Bon Jovi, who he now dubbed Bon Blow Me. Worst of all, the crowd took his side. Following Skid Row's performance, a mob led by John Bon Jovi himself began to aggressively approach Bach. An enraged Bon Jovi would say, I heard what you said on my stage, mother effer, before throwing a punch that Bach narrowly avoided. The Bon Jovi crew then grabbed Bach and hurled him against a concrete wall. Bon Jovi's brother and father would also join in the scuffle, with Bon Jovi Sr. screaming, I'll effing kill you in Sebastian's face. The feud would continue over the years, with Bach and Bon Jovi Jovi trading insults in the press before, thanks to another fateful chance encounter in a London bar, the two would patch things up. Michael Sweet, frontman of Christian rock band Striper, slammed Sebastian Bach in a 2016 Facebook post. Sweet shared a video of a 16-year-old fan performing the Skid Row track, I Remember You, along with the caption, Mariah kills this and, in my humble opinion, smokes the original singer. He also proceeded to call Bach a tool in the comment section. Bach would quickly fire back, tweeting, Michael Sweet has a big effing mouth. Behind a keyboard, that is. Can't wait to see this expletive in person again someday. My Michael Sweet would release an official statement on the matter, saying that he was more than willing to back up his opinion on Bach and that, quote, Unfortunately, because I'm a Christian, some people think that I'm supposed to turn the other cheek and let people say and do whatever they want. Bach would further elaborate in an interview with Eric Blair, stating, I think Striper sucks. I've always thought that, since I was a little kid. I think their songs suck. I think their effing clothes suck. What are they gonna do? Whip a Bible at me? Sebastian Bach is often told that he and wrestler slash rock star Chris Jericho look alike. So often, in fact, that Bach grew tired of the comparisons and lashed out at a fan on Twitter who compared the two. Bach also accused Jericho of lip syncing during live performances. Jericho countered Bach's claim, even challenging him to a sing off and posting a video of himself singing Skid Row's Youth Gone Wild. For some reason, this completely set off Bach, who proceeded to harass Jericho via a flurry of extremely aggressive 4am text messages. Although Jericho never responded to Sebastian's texts, Bach would continue to bring up Jericho's alleged lip-syncing in various interviews, even going as far as to make fun of Jericho's primary job as a professional wrestler. For his part, Jericho kept it classy, saying that Bach was entitled to his opinion and that he'd always be a fan of Skid Row. Jericho's guitarist, Rich Ward, would chime in, calling Sebastian universal disliked and saying that seeing Bach, quote, publicly go after the only guy that I have ever witnessed utter a nice word about him is sad. Ted Nugent and Sebastian Bach appeared alongside one another on the 2006 VH1 reality show Supergroup. The two did not get along, and Nugent would later blast Bach in an interview with Radio.com, saying that, while Bach was incredibly gifted, he was also weak because of his problems with alcohol. He doesn't understand how his indulgences and his poisons ruin his life, his relationships, and his marriage, said Nugent. But when you're the drunk Sebastian Bach, you're nowhere near the Sebastian Bach that you are when you're clean and sober. Case closed. 
That isn't a Ted Nugent opinion. That's a scientific truism. Bach responded on Twitter, brushing off the insults due to the fact that they came from someone that he considers to be a racist. In his 2016 memoir, 18 and Life on Skid Row, Sebastian revealed that Ted allegedly went on a racist tirade on the set of Supergroup, which forced Bach to speak with the show's producers and later refusing to continue working with the man he once considered to be his musical idol. The following year, Nugent slammed Bach for his comments, saying, quote, he falls in the inconsequential column. People like Sebastian Bach will listen to me praise black artists and call it racist. I mean, how much do you have to smoke to be that stupid? Late rock icon Meatloaf came after environmental activist Greta Thunberg in 2020, calling her brainwashed and saying that he felt bad for her. Thunberg would respond to Meatloaf by saying she doesn't care what people call her and is more interested in the scientific facts about climate change. Sebastian Bach would step in to defend Greta, retweeting Lizzie Hale of Hailstorm, who had also posted a tweet of her own calling Meatloaf out. Bach added that, quote, "...obviously anyone who thinks climate change isn't real is the one who was brainwashed." Bach has been outspoken on climate change since his New Jersey home was destroyed in Hurricane Irene. Additionally, while he was on tour in October of 2019, his family was evacuated from their current home in Southern California due to wildfires. Falling in reverse frontman Ronnie Radke faced backlash online when his band had to cancel a performance after losing their laptops. When justifying the cancellation, Radke would say, quote, As a band in 2022, you need your laptops. It's like driving a car without an engine. Radio personality Eddie Trunk would harshly criticize Radke for not fully playing live. Radke would then fire back at Trunk with a video of Eddie introducing Sebastian Bach to the stage using backing tracks, saying, quote, Both of these idiots talking smack about me despite using tracks. You can't make this up. Bach would respond by calling Radke a dummy and stating that real concerts don't need laptops. Radke would then point out that Bach has performed with Swedish DJ duo Dada Life, who perform exclusively with laptops. The two would argue on Twitter for several hours. Bach then seemingly challenged Radke to a fight, saying, It's always so much fun to show someone what the world was like before the internet existed. Can't wait to meet you in person. Name the time and place, and I will introduce you to rock and roll in person, man. Sebastian Bach is best known for his time as Skid Row's frontman. However, in 1996, Bach was fired from the band after accepting an opening slot for Kiss without consent from the rest of the band. The other members of the group told Bach that Skid Row was too big to be an opening act and that they were not going to take the shows. On that year's Thanksgiving holiday, Bach left a message on Skid Row guitarist Dave Snake Sabo's answering machine, telling him that the band would never be too big to open for Kiss, along with a number of harsh insults. Snake responded by telling Bach that he would never work with him again. Ironically, only four years later, a Bachless Skid Row was one of the opening acts for the 2000 Kiss Farewell Tour. In the years since Bach's departure, there have been several lucrative offers for the classic Skid Row lineup to reunite. Bach himself told Classic Rock in a 2002 interview that he didn't rule out singing with Skid Row in the future. Rachel Bolin would respond by saying, quote, Sebastian is delusional as always. He's out of Skid Row and he'll never rejoin. In the summer of 2019, Bach announced his plans to perform Skid Row's self-titled debut album in its entirety on a tour celebrating its 30th anniversary. He also issued an invitation for the band to play on stage with him for the first time since their split. Guitarist Dave Snake Sabo, seemingly still holding a grudge, would decline the offer, staying true to his promise of never working with Bach ever again. And that's our list. Did we miss anything? Let us know in the comment section below. And don't forget to like this video and subscribe to Heavy for daily videos about your favorite rock and metal bands. Make sure you hit that notification bell so you don't miss a thing. Thanks for watching Heavy, and we'll see you soon.